So this particular video is about perhaps my alter ego from a video game series known as the Ultima series. There's a new game associated with the creators of the Ultima series called Shroud of the Avatar. Shroud of the Avatar! Dr. Pepper Dragon here. I am Dr. Pepper Dragon of the Ultima Dragons. I joined the Ultima Dragons in 1997 as Dr. Pepper Dragon. Actually, I joined as Paravolcane Zay Dragon, which might have had an older join date, but he was still 1997. My brother joined in 1996, around the time Ultima Online was first alpha tested. Back during the alpha 1996 tests, I was stoked about Ultima Online. Big fan. Here's my Ankh pendant designed by Dennis Lou Bay, the main artist of the Ultima game box covers. And uh, Dennis Lou Bay, I commissioned him to make an amazing work of art uh, a year plus ago. And here it is, framed. I used this artwork on my channel, Rasmus Gaming, and people might think, hey, I think it's phenomenal. It doesn't look exactly like you, some people might say. It's not supposed to look like me, it's my character in the game. He's wearing full plate, he has a cloth hood, he's kind of like a tank mage with a sword, and he's so obsessed with immortality that, as you can see, his face is made out of steel, just like his armor. And uh, I guess he used a magic spell to uh, turn himself into an automaton. An immortal robotic type being. So he's the most powerful automaton in the lore and legend of something I just made up right now. But pretty cool. I like it very much. In 2017, I was able to get Dennis Lubay to sign this in person at the Dragon Con, the first ever Dragon convention for the Ultima Dragons. I'm going to show some of my Ultima stuff. Why not? Let's, let's give it a shot. We have my Ultima box of stuff. This is my Ultima trinket box. And here's my really cool uh, Unk. Designed by Dennis Lubay. Very cool. You can get that at Dennis Lubay's Shapeways shop. Just type in Onk at Shapeways. You can find it. But here is my Ultima Trinket Box. Some newest additions. This really cool Chaos Metal. Um, perhaps it was commissioned by Lord Blackthorn, also known as Star Long, also known as Dark Star. In Shroud of the Avatar with a really cool chaos design that you can see in Shroud of the Avatar. And I did meet Starlong in person in 2017 and he had this and he also had a really cool scorpion medal which is exclusively only for him. I have some you know just random things like the uh, collector, collector's edition for Tabula Rasa in here. I like that it had uh, Richard Garriott's serpent design on it. And yeah, it has some really cool uh, glyphs, pictographs designed for that game to be understood by all species of aliens and humans. Here we have a rune stone. Now this is just a regular rune stone. You hold it up a regular rune stone, piece of obsidian or onyx. And here we have the Japanese edition of the Moonstone from Ultima 6. And Richard Garriott said the Japanese edition is kind of like an Apache tear. It's see through. You can see through it. Perhaps it is an Apache tear. Locally, that's what it's known as. Uh, 
But I'm gonna hold it up to the light and you're gonna see. Very cool thing. This is the reason I bought the Japanese edition Ultima 6. You can see through it. Now, gonna have to find an angle which doesn't directly go toward the sun. But, uh, yikes, I can't point my camera at the sun. It'll damage it. I'll try to get a better angle. But it most definitely is smoky, semi-transparent. Very cool. And not everything in here is from an official Ultima. This right here is, looks like a carved piece of jade. And I got this at the Yosemite Yosemite gift shop many years ago. So I don't know if you can still get it there, but that's where I got it. I think it was originally had a string on it. Originally had a string or something, but I took that off. Because it looked exactly like a little serpent sculpture in the game. And this is an Ankh that I found at a thrift store for one dollar. And I had to get it. Because it looked so much like an Ultima Ankh. Here we have the Ultima 9 Ankh. Comes with Ultima 9. Oh, I have two of them. Because I have two copies of Ultima 9. Here we have the Fellowship Medallion from Ultima 7, the Black Gate. Very cool. My uncle actually built this box from scratch. Very high quality. But I did, I made the uh, foam insert. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six original Ultima Underworld aluminum runestone coins. Very cool. We have relics by Rild made some really nice crowns of the obsidian. These ones are really cool. These are the golden ones. I got two of them. They're just very high quality, very well made. I like them. A lot of this stuff is from Relics by Rilt. The Chaos Metal, this Oracle coin, the Oracle on the back, and the Temple with the eyeball on the front, or maybe that's the back. Here we have a uh, Shroud of the Avatar chaos in one side. We have Lord British's emblem on the back side. We have another fellowship rune because we did have two copies and I've had so many copies over the years I must have ran across an extra one. Here we have the medallion from the first ever 2017 Ultima Dragons convention at Disneyland. Here we have an official pewter Ultima 4 Ankh. I've had many over the years and I had to downsize but I kept my favorite one. We have a pagan Ultima 8 pentagram coin. Very cool. We have an Ultima 5 codex coin. And I do have slots for the Ultima 1 Collector's Edition coins, but I had to let that go, unfortunately, because I had to move out of state. I needed money to pay rent. But one day I'm going to rebuy it and put it back in. Prices, though, are skyrocketing. Here I have my original pewter Ultima Online pin. Hopefully I have the back somewhere because I just stuck it in so it would stay in place. But this is my Ultima Trinket box. Um, I was complimented on it by Duncan Jones, son of David Bowie, but in his own right, very good director who directed the World of Warcraft movie, Warcraft. He directed uh, Moon, a very cool movie. I'm a big fan of Moon and very talented director, so I was surprised. And why did he compliment me? Because Richard Garriott tweeted out something I tweeted, retweeted me, and then Duncan Jones happened to be a fan 
of Richard Garriott, a fan of the Ultimate Series, and he, he saw it and he saw that I was a true fan. And I didn't respond immediately because I was kind of starstruck. You know, sometimes I'm not I'm, I'm not going to be expecting any celebrities to look at my tweets. But this is my Ultima Trinket Box. It's going to continue to grow and it's going to continue to change. But I don't want to sell off anything. Start your own collection. I mean, a lot of these things are still available. Relics by Rilled still sells these. Um... It's not hard to get a Tabula Rasa Collector's Edition. You could still get this to this day. This very awesome, my favorite style Ankh from the cover of many Ultima manuals and games. And this Egyptian Ankh I just got off the internet for like 99 cents. And then I cut off the little pendant thing and I just glued it on. Very simple. There it is. I actually designed it. I, I put that on there trying to match the trinket box you can find in Ultima 9. I think if you go to Lord British's chambers, you can find a box in Ultima 9 that looks sort of like this. And I modeled this after that. <laughs> a lot of different cool things. I did hold on to this one. And I bought this not too many years ago. But I'm definitely going to be holding on to this. This is Ultima Underworld, the big boxed edition. I guess it's considered a re-released special promotional release edition. And you're very familiar with this if you're an Ultima fan. But this happens to be a sealed copy. Never opened. Sealed. Never opened. So, pretty cool. The contents, of course, the runes little aluminum rune coins in the bag and then the paper maps and all that very cool addition this would have to be my rarest because it's still sealed I did have a sealed Ultima 6 but when you fall on hard times you have to do what you gotta do I am a fan of Ankh's I designed this Ankh myself from scratch from one piece of wood. Uh, it's my first attempt at making a giant Ankh. I wanted it to really pop and really uh, be black and white. It's just a theme of my new show, Mysterialis. But it's also related to the Ultima games. If you've never played Shroud of the Avatar, I highly recommend you check it out. It's actually pretty fun and addicting when you get into the skill tree system and you want to master it. Why am I talking about this stuff and not some paranormal supernatural stuff? Because I'm not a two-dimensional character, I'm not a three-dimensional character or a fourth-dimensional character. Everyone has many dimensions. We're higher dimensional beings. And the fact of the matter is, I have other hobbies and interests. Magic only in the realm of video games, not in real life, but here we have <laughs> Ultima Underworld, the non-sealed edition, and I don't have a full set of the Ultimas. Let me go through and see what I got. Here we have my copy of Ultima 8, Pagan. Ultima 8, I guess he got mixed reviews or whatever when it came out, but... 1994, I believe. A very old game. 1993 is the copyright. This game, I thoroughly played from beginning to end. More than once. I could tell you, I know I beat it uh, at least two or three times. Without any walkthroughs. Back when the internet didn't have walkthroughs. And I didn't have access to the internet. That's correct. I beat this game without any clue books, without any walkthroughs. I did get hints from my brother who also played it, and I can tell you, if you beat the Titans, there's four Titans of the four elements. There's the Earth, Air, Water, Fire, of course. If you beat the Earth Titan last, you're not going to beat the game. You're not going to win. You have to beat the Earth Titan early. It's, it's the, one of the easier ones, and I knew that going in the second time. 
So I decided to leave the easiest one for last. But if you leave the easiest one for last, you can't beat the game. I don't know if they patched it or not. They definitely guide you toward beating that one first, but I remember the comment, how did you get away with selling a game with a big pentagram on the cover? Well, it might have hurt the sales. A lot of concerned parents from the old Satanic Panic era, which wouldn't have been too far away from 1993, <laughs> might have said, hey, uh, maybe I'm not going to buy this game for my kids. You know, this is looks a little adult, and most definitely it's adult theme to a certain extent. The beginning scene is someone getting their head chopped off with pixels. But it's a very well-drawn game, very well artistically designed. I like it a lot. It's very much like Diablo, and it came out way before Diablo, 1993. So the main town is cool and all, but most of the game is in underground catacombs, which goes throughout the entire island of Pagan. And how do you hold it upright? Who knows, right? You can see the different... Here we have probably earth, wind, air, fire, the different tempest things, and here's the the city, and most of the game is underground in the catacombs. I still have my original Ultima Online. This is the box I bought at Software Etc. Still has the map, still has everything. I see people lose the map box a lot, but uh, I kept everything. Two Ultima Online Charter Editions. When I saw these pop up, I snagged them a long time ago. This one's crushed a little bit, but it doesn't matter because I bought it for the singular purpose of having another Hildebrandt print. The Hildebrandt brothers are famous for their fantasy art, and they're very good artists. And here is the Hildebrandt print I will get framed one of these days. I bought this exclusively to get it framed. I got this copy cheap because it didn't have the disc. I don't need the disc. How I wanted was the extras. And it doesn't have a map or a pin because I gave the map and pin to my nephew, who's also a big fan of the Ultima games. And that map and pin were in this box. And the only way you can get an Ultima map that's not folded is from the Charter Edition, where the box is big enough where the map doesn't need to be folded. So I, I, as a gift, I give my nephew the map and the pin, which aren't cheap. That map unfolded, fairly valuable. And the first thing he does is he folds it up. And I'm like, no, don't fold it. I mean, it's yours. You can do whatever you want. But please don't fold it. Don't fold it because um, it's only been unfolded perfectly for 20 years, if not more. 20 years of being perfect and pristine, and you're just going to crinkle it up? Please, please don't do that. But it's probably folded right very at this very minute. It's probably as folded as you can fold an Ultima online map. When I say it wasn't folded, okay. It's folded once. I stand corrected. It's folded one time, but he did fold it multiple, multiple times. So there's one fold in the Charter Edition Ultima Online map. It has the disc. has everything. I even put the uh, certificate in a plastic sleeve. And on some websites it says it's signed by Lord British. But those are pixels. That's not a real signature, that's a pixelated printout. I guess it's possible some people can't tell the difference between a pixelated printout, but uh, to me it's extremely obvious. Being an Ultima Dragon, being Dr. Pepper Dragon, and I also was Rasmus Dragon for five seconds, Paravolcani Dragon for a period of time, but uh, Dr. Pepper Dragon is my main name. And I also had a website, Raz's Ultima page, short for Rasmus. I've been going by Rasmus for many years. I have two copies of the Dragon Edition of Ultima 9. And why do I have two copies? Probably for the same reason. Yes, for the same reason. Because it comes with a print. It also has a printed certificate. And here is the Ultima 9 map. You've seen a lot of this stuff before, but some people who are not fans have never seen it. Uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna collect 
any games, collect a game that comes with cool cloth maps, you know? This edition comes with a set of tarot cards. The Ultima Tarot Cards, which I believe I did use in one video where I was illustrating tarot cards. I don't own tarot cards. I'm not a practicing occultist, never have been. The closest thing I have are these video game tarot cards, which they're pretty cool. Ah, they're pretty cool, they're pretty cool. <laughs> the uh, Tapestry of Ages, I believe it's called. Ultima 5 map, pretty cool. Here we have the Ultima 6 map. Very cool one right here. I like this one a lot. Stylistically, there are two main versions of the Ultima 4 map. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite Ultima 4 map right here. I do have both versions. But uh, this is... Ultima 4 is known as one of the most classic Ultimas. I know my brother was a big fan. It was a little bit before my time. I have played Ultima 4, but not when it came out. A little bit while after. Here we have an advertisement for <laughs> Ultima Online 2 on the back of the Ultima 9 <laughs> game. Sadly, a cancelled game that never came in the year 2000. But guess what did come, alright? A game called Shroud of the Avatar. Check out Shroud of the Avatar. Shroudoftheavatar.com. It's a fun game. It takes a little while to get used to it and get into it. But after you start training magic, training archery, training swords, pole staffs, I have a halberd, a nice goes through shields. You, you can play with freaking a mace. You can play you know, with a blunt, a blunt hammer. There are many, many different things you can do, but magic, there are many different magics. And I want to master every single magic, and I'm focusing on archery to go with it. has some really cool manuals that are leather looking. We have my favorite game of all time. I wish I saved more than one copy. At one point I had like four copies of this. Now I just have one left. But I kept the best one for myself, obviously. And it's Serpent Isle, my favorite game of all time. Serpent Isle. Phenomenal game from A to Z. Part two of this game right here, The Black Gate. The Black Gate, I also had a couple copies. And it looks like I just have one copy left. My collection is thinning out. This is the cloth map. For Serpent Isle. A phenomenal game, an amazing game. If you can get it anywhere, check it out. If you have the patience, I know it's not a modern game. There are just phenomenally amazing themes. Can't even describe how much I'm a fan of it. Here we have the Ultima 7 map. This is an unusual version. Looks like the printing is a little bit off. So you're definitely going to find different variations. This is the Ultima 7 map. The old Britannia. And I will do a live stream when I get my boxed edition of Shroud of the Avatar. I ordered a package back in 2013, I believe it was. And so it's been like five years. So it's kind of a big deal to me. When I get the physical contents in the box shipped to me, I'm going to be doing a live stream. I'm going to open it up and show you guys to show, you know, there's more to life than perhaps this or that. Shroud of the Avatar is a pretty fun game. Uh, I would have to say to the newcomer, ignore housing. Ignore the little houses you can, although, if you finish the main quest, you can get a row house deed. I just recently moved from my village-sized lot to a row-sized house lot because personally I didn't need that village lot. I didn't want it. I didn't need it. I prefer this row one. So when I finish this quest, and I'm still new to playing the game because I held off many years. 
Perhaps it's because I wanted to play when I got the box, or got this, or got that out of my package. But to the newcomers, ignore all the houses. Ignore the houses. The game is funner when you just log in, kill some things, train up your skills. Every time you log in, you get 10,000 experience points. Every time you kill monsters that are even hardly difficult for you, you gain experience points for your adventuring level. You have crafting. The crafting system is amazing. I recommend being a wizard, a mage, and casting spells, and wearing cloth armor, and becoming a tailor, and crafting your own cloth armor. I'm a blacksmith that mines his own ore and turns it into ingots, but ingots are so hard to come by that I haven't crafted anything yet. I have like 100 iron ingots, 75 copper ingots. I haven't crafted anything yet. Cotton is so dirt cheap, you can buy it super cheap, and in mass quantity you can crank out the best cloth armor and craft it yourself. You can make a hood just like this. Here we have Ultima 5. Very cool cover. You can see the magic arrow going through Shamino. And Dupre appears to be, or maybe that's the Avatar. Protecting him, we have the three Shadow Lords. Very cool cover done by Dennis Lube, the same amazing artist who made this custom portrait. And here we have Ultima 4, one of the most classic Ultimas. Very cool picture of the Avatar in a robe holding a staff with an ankh glowing. Looks like the ocean. Here we have Ultima 3. Exodus. Ultima 3. Every single one of these Ultima games are collectible, but I don't want to have the biggest collection in the world, you know? Here is the Ultima 3 map. It's a pretty big one. Pretty cool continent there. Very cool. Here we have Ultima 6. The Japanese edition. And the reason I bought this Ultima 6 Japanese edition is because Richard Garriott said the Japanese edition of Ultima 6, the moonstones that came with it, were see through. You could hold it up to a light and see through it. And I was like, wow, I never knew heard that. I never knew that. I have a binder with signed certificates. I'll show in another video. Signed by Richard Garriott himself. But uh, I went to the Dragon Convention last year, 2017, and this map was one of the things that came with the package that you could pledge for. And here it is. All right. This is, it says, let me just hold it up right here. Disney Island by Slashing Dragon. So Slashing Dragon made a very cool map of Disney Island, Disneyland. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You know, I'm such a fan of Serpent Isle that I designed the gate in the game. And it took a bit of artistic license to really turn tiny pixels into a life-size thing, and I originally made a huge one. Maybe I'll show you that one one of these days. But it's not as detailed and it's not as good as this small one, because when I made the big one, I was like, eh, I kind of messed up. I want to do it exactly. And uh, I don't make these anymore. I could. Upon request, I suppose I could. But this is the Serpent Gate, or my representation, my creative adaptation of what the Serpent Gate in Serpent Isle looks like in a physical form. Uh, this is all individually placed pieces of clay that I hand molded. And this is simply a cast. And I do have a cast where I can make multiple copies, but I've only casted, as far as I know, 
a very few copies. We're talking I've made as many as three or four. And I've only painted, I think I've only painted like three. I gave one to Lord British, Richard Garriott, when I was at Disneyland for the Dragon Convention. I kept one for myself, and I might have put one on eBay. So if you got that, and that was years ago, you're lucky. I don't know if I'm going to be making these. Upon request, I'll consider it. It's not easy casting it perfectly without any air bubbles and then painting it to my specifications. As far as the original master of clay, it got destroyed during the mold making process. So there is no original version. It got destroyed. When I pulled the mold off, it perfectly casted it, but the clay parts started breaking and falling all over the place. It was too difficult to even attempt to put them back together, so I just threw it away. But here is my Dr. Scholl's shoebox of Ultima rarities. Now, I don't have the pewter dragon statues that I used to. Man, I really wish I held on to those, but hard times happen to everyone, and I had to let those go due to just paying regular bills. But this is my Dr. Scholl's box of Ultima rarities. We have, I can't show the address, but we have my Ultima Online beta disc right here. <laughs> There's like a thousand <laughs> things written on the back of this one. But my Ultima Online beta disc here. And another one of my Ultima Online beta discs. And another one. Uh, some of these are for later versions of Ultima Online. Some of them are for Phase 1 and Phase 2. And most definitely I snag some stuff off the internet. It, it's the only cloth version of the Second Age Ultima Online map ever. So I had to snag it. I'm a fan of that iteration of the Ultima Online universe. You know, there's a really cool guy who runs... The Ultima Codex. I think it's ultimacodex.com. And he invited me into the Ultima Forever beta test. And thanks to him, I think his name is Kenneth, very appreciated, the guy who runs ultimacodex.com, I was able to beta test Ultima Forever. Of course, a game that no longer exists. But they sent me a box because of, of that. And they sent me a very cool map. The Ultima Forever map, Quest for the Avatar, Quest for the Avatar. But I like the map, it's very cool. There's two versions of this map. There's a, there's like a convention version that's very thin and flimsy. I did have that, but I had to let it go. And then there's a nice silky heavy version. I wanted to keep this one because it's very cool. It like doubles as a monitor wipe or something but no way would I ever use it for that okay what else do I got in here got some random discs <laughs> random serpent isle discs I got uh, just random versions of Ultima Online we have Age of Shadows oh here's my original my original Ultima Online discs here are my original Ultima Online discs that I took out of the cardboard sleeves that they mailed me and I put them in these plastic sleeves and to differentiate between the two I put this on the back for Phase 1 and Phase 2 of Ultima Online and I guess these are highly collectible and many times have I copied these and put them up as zip files you can see those zip files online to this day. I do have like a Dropbox or something with these zip files. I might have to find it, but it's there. <laughs> we have a, a third Dawn beta test which tried to copy. It tried to copy the original one. But by the time third Dawn came out, and I think this is the first time they had a 3D version of Ultima Online. It was horrendous. It was horrible. 
<sighs> I never played 3D. I always played Ultima Online in 2D. Okay, Ultima Forever had their own version of the tarot cards. And this is the big version. I never took it out of the plastic. Ultima Forever also had a uh, the game on like a a card USB drive or something. And the guy in charge of Ultima Forever had a nice note that he signed. I kept that. Very nice. <laughs> the Age of Shadows game was free. Very shortly after this came out, you can download it for free. So not too many people got the box. I'm one of the few people that I got the box, then I saw it was a free download. I was like, what? <laughs> Ultima Online, The Second Age. I lost my map, but I still have the disc. And then my original Ultima Online Strategy Guide. My pile I stacked over here is about to fall like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. I have to rescue it before I destroy all of my rare things. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And this channel isn't all about video games, obviously. This is more for my video game channel. So why am I not putting this on my video game channel? Because my video game channel's dead, okay? So rarely, rarely, occasionally rarely, will you see a video sort of like this. Give me feedback on what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Be honest. I am going to do a book review on Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's The Edge of the Unknown. I have to do this book review as soon as possible because I'm going to forget. I'm going to forget what was in it. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, firm believer in spiritualism, spiritism, going to seances and communicating with the dead. Kind of freaky subject, kind of freaky topic. A lot of people made fun of Sir Arthur Conan Doyle for it, but he was an intelligent man. He was a smart guy. He invented Sherlock Holmes, one of the most genius fictional characters in modern literature. So how is it? that the guy that created one of the most insanely genius detectives that could lightning speed thought process could detect who did what and what happened. How could Sir Arthur Conan Doyle be tricked into charlatans cr doing fake seances? The thing is, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle thoroughly discusses that topic and says most definitely there are charlatans. He said these charlatans hurt the real field and he went to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seances. He said he went to some fake ones and immediately knew off the bat it was fake. Went to some real ones, many real ones, had first-hand friendships with the top mediums of America, of the UK. He had one-on-one -on -one conversations. He saw full-body manifestations of spirits. Things that cannot be tricked because what the manifestations were, were things that he never relayed to the mediums. So, very interesting book. I'm gonna do a full review of this book coming soon. Hopefully I'll film it this weekend, but I don't know if it'll be up this weekend, because my ghost investigation... I could finally take this off, hopefully. <laughs> my ghost investigation. They're going to go very well. I can hear a lot different when I don't have a hood over my head. So if I was shouting, that's the reason why. Stay tuned. Tomorrow I'm going to film myself talking about the ghost investigations that were too short to be their own video. I went to the old Del Paso Theater in Sacramento, which is no longer there. I heard about a ghost story in the area. I went to a church where the priest saw a hooved, classical, devilish creature and it disappeared when he put his hand on the door of the church. I walked down the very sidewalk that priest walked down where he said the creature was following him. 
I have other walk down the sidewalk type investigations that are too short for, for a full video, or maybe they're not. I could definitely stretch them out and dramatize them and throw in some special effects. I could draw, but I'm not going to do a cartoon. I'm not going to spend a million dollars on a video which might only get 200 views. This channel is up and down and all around, and I would love to get a decent amount of views. I know you, 9,000 plus subscribers, are watching. But I also know a few thousand here and there, and a few thousand here and there. You just don't use that account anymore. When you have a nine-year-old channel, some of your subscribers are nine years old as well. Or they subscribed to you nine years ago, eight years ago, seven years ago, six years ago, five years ago. But I know for a fact a good 5,000 of you have subscribed in the past two years. So I know you have the ability to click that notification bell and watch all my videos. Stay tuned, more episodes coming soon. I'm Dr. Pepper Dragon of the Ultima Dragons. Uh, as you can see, I'm a huge Ultima fan. Check out Shroud of the Avatar. Check out my new show, Mysterialis, where I investigate ghosts. Until next time, this has been John Rasmus. Ah! I'll be seeing you.